Every time I make a TBR video, I'm always shook by how the like month flies by. Like literally, it's almost February. Like what the freaking heck? I don't know how the year's going by so fast already, but I have 20 books here that I want to read in February. So we're gonna go through all of these so you guys can see all of the things on my TBR and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys are planning on reading reading in February. I know so many of you guys are wanting to read like lots of books by black authors and you guys know that on this channel I do that anyway. Usually on my TBR I have about 10 to 12 books by black authors that I like have on my TBR to read and then the other half are usually books that are either diverse in their relationships or diverse in like um, body types or um just like different books that you don't see often like indie authors and things like that i really really try to mix up my tbr um then i also add in thrillers so we have a good mix here but let's get into the 20 books that i want to read in february so we're starting off with um a book by britney cherry because Britney Cherry's books have literally, like they have my heart. I think I'm gonna read a book by her every month. Like I just cannot get over her writing. I really enjoy it. I think it's because in her book, she always tries to add like a, I don't know, like some other subplot to really keep the story moving along. And I read The Coldest Winter by her and I also read The Holly Dates by her. Really enjoy both of them and this is one of the books that so many of you guys have said is like really, really good. Also the cover is incredible. On the back it says, each day I prayed for my husband to love me again, even though I knew his heart wasn't destined to love. So this is supposed to be like a very heartfelt book and a lot of her books are. On the front it says, he's the stain on our perfect town. So I'm kind of going in like not super blind, but blind enough where I feel like I'm just gonna be really surprised by this book. Um, again, I wanna read lots of books that people have not read yet this year, and this is one that I've had a lot of people read, but also I feel like it doesn't get enough hype. I feel like the mixtape by her is one book that a lot of people hype up, so I wanna read this. I also wanna read Binding um, 13 by Chloe Walsh, and this is the first book in the Boys of Tommen series. So many of you guys have said that if I enjoyed Magnolia Parks that I should read this series and I think that these characters are just supposed to give like One Tree Hill vibes like they have a lot going on in their life but you're just kind of following them along and I feel like it's very rare to find books like that usually there's like a specific plot like something going on or like a trope that like really pulls the book along I actually saw this TikTok to one time and the person was like are authors creating stories out of like their own brains or or are author oh, that's a really hard to say or are authors creating stories based off of tropes which is interesting because if you're creating a story around a trope i feel like you can tell a little bit more than if you're just creating a story around characters and like the story moves with the characters if that makes any sense um so this is supposed to be a story that is just like purely you're just following the characters' lives, and I'm sure there's gonna be different tropes and things in here that I'll pick up on, but I'm excited for this. On the back it says, he wants to save her, she wants to hide. She's damaged, he's determined, fate brought them together, love binds them. Um, so I'm really excited to read this, and this is actually the new um, binding of this, and it's super floppy, which is really nice. The other copy that I have is like really thick, um, and I'm actually unhauling it. I have not unhauled the books yet that I like plan on unhauling. They're sitting like in a little spot. I'm gonna give them to free little library. So this is me encouraging you. If you have any books that you like aren't planning on reading or just aren't gravitating towards, the beginning of the year is the like best time to really like go through those and decide like, do I wanna keep these or do I wanna pass these on to someone else? Cause I know that the minute I put a book in a free little library, someone's probably gonna read it like that same night. So that makes me excited. Uh, I also have Soul Ties by Miss Candace and this is supposed to be a book that's super heartfelt. I'm really in the mood for really heartfelt romances because I have just been such like, I've been in the biggest book hangover since Into the Dark. And there's a difference between a book hangover and book slump. I've never been to book slump and this is actually my first book hangover. A book hangover is like after you read a book that's just so good like five stars which into the dark or yeah into the dark was literally like six stars for me and i never have rated anything six stars so it's like okay come on guys like we have five like numbers to deal with like stay within that but this book 
literally transcended the fifth star and it's a book that I immediately wanted to read again after I finished it and you guys will get like a little review of that book whenever I share like all the books that I've read in January um but love 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 that book but with that has come the biggest book hangover where a book hangover is where you read a book that's so good that you feel like nothing will compare and so everything else you pick up is just like oh like I want to read but like is there going to be anything that's going to like compare to this book? Like, you know what I mean? So a lot of the books that I've read this month, I feel like I've rated in three stars, 3.5 stars. I don't even know if I've had a ton of four stars. I think maybe I've had a few trickled in, but I've been so much more harsh with the books I've been reading because I feel like I'm comparing them to Into the Dark. The new book comes out in February, so y'all, Read the series now so you can be in on it whenever that book comes out because I need to talk about it with you guys. Um, but I have been in the biggest book hangover because of that book. And so I'm trying to find heartfelt books that I will hopefully connect with even more that will get me really emotional, that will like pull out all the feels like it did with Into the Dark. Now a book slump is like where you just do not feel like reading, like nothing is intriguing you. And like it is, different because you just don't have the desire to really read like with a book hangover i feel like you have a desire to read but you feel like nothing is going to compare to the other book that you've read i don't know anyway semantics whatever <laughs> i am really excited to read this um it's supposed to be an intense connection between two people that binds them together mentally spiritually and physically and that's what soul tie i guess means and that's what the back of this book says so Really excited to read this one, um, and I don't think I've heard a lot of people talk about this. I also plan on reading Pucking Around, y'all. I got this book. I got this book when I was at the store with Alex, and I am deeply regretting it. Deeply regretting it. Not because like this author is not good. Like I've ne literally never read anything from this author, but you guys know. I don't really like that much spice. And if there is spice, it has to be super passionate. So like Real by Kennedy Ryan has, I think a good amount of spice, like a very good amount, but there's also like so much passion, so many heartfelt, deep conversations. It's a very long book. So I just really connected with the characters. You cry in that book. It's very emotional. Like there's so many books that I enjoy that have spice, but this might be too much for me. Like literally when we were in the store, we were flipping through it and we could already see words that were like, this is gonna be spicy. And this is also like 750 pages. I will say the front is sparkly, so that is kind of drawing me to it. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but like the letters are sparkly, which I think is cool. We'll see, this is also supposed to be a uh, why choose romance which I've never read before. So we're just jumping in the deep end. I think I'm gonna do like a video with Alex reading this book. Um, I think she's gonna like it. Cause you guys know, like we have very different tastes in books but I feel like this will be a book that she enjoys. And if it has good writing, maybe I'll like it. But if it has too much spice, I feel like I'm just gonna be like trudging through it. I've never done enough to book but maybe this will be the first one, we'll see. I also always try to add in a graphic novel into my month and this one is called Eat, Sweeney Boot Eat and Love Yourself and I think it's about a girl who has um, disordered eating and she really struggles with like that kind of thing and you get to see that in this book and she's kind of trapped in this war in her own mind of like with food and stuff. Um, I try to add in a graphic novel every month because I feel like if I come out of like a really good book Sometimes like a nice palette cleanser is a graphic novel or if I come out of reading like a thriller, I'll read a graphic novel before I get back into a romance. It's just like a nice little breakup between the two. Um, I'm also picking up a book. Why did I do this with this? Why did I pick up the book like this? I literally did. What am I freaking like Gumby? Why did I pick it up like that? Let me pick it up normally. Um, this uh, book is by Riley Sager. It's called The Only One Left. And I read The House Across the Lake by this author. Really enjoyed his writing, like really enjoyed it. So I wanted to read more books by him. Um, immediately after I read that book, I wanted to buy more books by this author. And I was like, oh, I literally already have one on my shelf. So that's the thing though, about when you like learn about yourself and what you like to read, it's really easy to like find things that you're gonna enjoy because you just know yourself. And I really, really, really like 
like his writing and I felt like I would just by like, I don't know, flipping through the pages. One thing that I look for when I flip through the pages and I say this all the time is I look at the dialogue, like how much dialogue is in the book. That is a big thing for me. Like there's not a lot of dialogue and there's a lot of like the back thoughts and backstory and stuff. Like I'm probably not gonna be as interested. If there's a lot of dialogue, it's usually fairly fast paced. So um, yeah, I am excited to read this. Uh, I have a couple of other thrillers in here as well. I also um, have Work Song by Daniel Allen. And this book <laughs> is actually gonna be in my next video, which is going to be, I think, um, a 24 hour uh, reading challenge and it's actually in a haul so you guys will see this in that video but I wanted to add this in because I do want to read it in February even though I literally just got it I love Daniel Allen's writing she has a lot of dialogue she's a black author as you guys can see every other author that I'm like every other book that I'm showing you is by a black author for the most part um and her books just like I feel like they're fairly emotional books. Like almost all of these books are like super emotional. Like you're supposed to just like really be connected to the characters. That is what I need. Like that is what I need. I cannot do any fluffy books this month. Like I need to have my heart ripped out. I need to get another four and a half, five star read. I also have Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wilsner. Um, this is a queer read and I try to add in at least one queer read each month because I just think it's so important to like read not only diversely with um, black authors, but also with like just different types of relationships and people who are neurodivergent or people who are in bigger bodies. I think that it's just such a beautiful thing to read diversely because I feel like I learn about just like so many like parts of the world that maybe I'm not already connected to. So this is supposed to be a good book about a woman who goes to a bar and while she's at the bar, I think she's at a college like bar, while she's there, she's like, ooh, this girl's like cute, like whatever. And come to find out that girl is actually her daughter's best friend and her daughter brings the girl home and I'm pretty sure like they have like a one night stand like that night or something. And so she's just like, huh? Like this is my daughter's best friend. She brings her home for like Thanksgiving or whatever. So it's supposed to be kind of like a wild like little story. And I think that this will be like good. I also picked up Where There's Smoke, There's Fire. I have all these books linked below, which is why I'm not really saying like the authors. So you guys can just literally go to the description and buy all of them. I can't remember if I had this on my TBR or not last month, but I really want to read this because I have another book coming by the same author and I don't do that very often. Like usually I'll read um, one book by the author first, see if I like it and then buy other ones. But I just could not leave this on the shelf and could not leave the other book on the shelf. But I kind of want to read this book before the other one comes to the house. Um, this says that it's a black contemporary take on the epic love story. Uh, where there's smoke, there's fire, and Kara's journey is what happens after the ha happily ever after. Uh, I just, I feel like it's gonna be good. And I love how books these days are also including trigger warnings in the front, um, cause I think that it's very helpful for people who are like looking to read books. I was just thinking about that as I was flipping through it. Um, I think back to when I was in high school, they didn't really have that as much as they do now, which is like really neat. Also, I'm reading The One with the Kiss Cam by Cindy Steele. It's a sweet romantic comedy. Um, I also feel like I could use some humor. And I, again, don't want like a ton of super, super fluffy books, but one of you guys actually told me that I shared this in a haul that I had, and you were like, oh my God, you've got to read that book. It is so cute, like, please do it. And I was like, you know what? I trust her, I'm gonna put this on my TBR. There's also another book that you guys recommended that I'm putting on my TBR. Speaking of TBR, this is the book I've had on my TBR twice. Literally twice. Like, I need to read this book. Like, I need to read it. And it is St. Avenue by Sheree Lewis. I know, this is my third time having this on my TBR, but I keep putting it on my TBR because I want to read it so bad. But every month, I think I just get nervous because it's like 500 pages, it's thick. Um, and a lot of the time, not only is it thick, it's like pretty tall, but a lot of the time I'm like, what do you have to say in a romance? That's that many pages. Like, what do you have to say? But the start of the book is already intriguing me, which is why I want to read it. Like the start of it says, what the F? Yasmin whispered, rising from her chair. This couldn't be, her ears have to be playing a dirty trick on her. She looked to her right as her attorney, Grace, rose from her seat. 
Her lips were pressed firmly together as she buttoned her blazer. The older black woman wore the same bewildered expression as she did. Yasmin looked forward at the judge in total disbelief. My house, she blurted out louder than she anticipated. He gets my house? Miss Green, Grace whispered, please remain calm at this time. The judge looked over his thick wire glasses, giving Yasmin a warning glare. After taking a much needed gulp, her fiery eyes cut at Grace with in incredul in incred mm, I know the word. It's like incredulous, incred incredulity <laughs> written all over her features. Are you serious right now? She muttered harshly. He's taking my house. I refuse to be calm. That's literally how it starts, guys. And like, I'm already wanting to read it. Like, I'm on the second page. So, uh, yeah, this book has intrigued me every month. And every month, I don't read it. So, hold me to this. I need to finish this book. If it's not in my reading wrap-up next time, y'all, we have a problem. And then I also have another stack. This is the last stack the last half of the 20 books. Um, I want to read The Locked Door by Frieda McFadden. Um, this is another book that I feel like so many people have talked about and I just haven't read it. I actually have almost all of her books that are on her back list in my house because she's one of my favorite thriller authors. Like I just gobble up her books every single time. She always hits me with the plot twist. Super fast paced. I finished them in like a day or two. So I wanted to add this in because not only do I want to read books by other authors, like thriller authors that I'm like kind of trying out to see if I like, but I also want to go back to my tried and true ones like Sheree Lapina and Frieda McFadden. And sometimes I feel like I almost feel bad reading from the same author again and again because I'm like, there's so many authors out there that I haven't read, but also like, I like Free to Be Fatten, so I want to read it. So let me know what authors are your like auto buy authors that you just like want to read every month. I feel like they just, I mean, granted, Free to McFadden does not give me comfort by any means because she's definitely not a comfort read, but she just like, I know I'm getting something good with her. And I always like to add in books by authors that I feel very confident in every month because if I'm going to read a bad book, and I finish it, again, I have not DNF'd a book ever, but I've read some bad books. If I read a bad book for me, not a bad book for everyone, but a bad book for me, after I get done with that bad book, this bad boy is getting picked up because anytime I read a bad book, I have to read something that's like tried and true afterward because it gives me just hope for books because, I don't know, I lose a lot of hope in books when I read like a bad book that I just don't like. Uh, Higher Love by Alexandria House is another book that I want to read. This is about a popular travel blogger um, and it looks like it's a good one. It's also fairly short. So many of you guys have said that Alexandria House's writing is incredible. Why well, haven't I read it? I don't know, but I've been trying to put new authors on my TBR every month so that I can like I don't know, just find them and then share them with you guys if I like them. But it is so easy for me to stick to the same authors over and over again. So I've been trying to branch out a little bit every month just to add in a few that I'm trying to see if I like. Speaking of that, I've never read anything from Shanora Williams, who is a black author, along with Alexandria House and so many others that I've shared. Um, but this is a diverse college sports romance book and it says, coaching was never this difficult until the rookie came along. I feel like this book is gonna be so good. I don't know what it is about books that don't have cartoons on them. I always feel like the book is gonna be better. Like comment below if you're like that too, but like if there's cartoons on a book, I feel like it's gonna be fun. I feel like it's gonna be fluffy. I feel like I'm gonna have a good time. But these are the types of books that I feel like I'm gonna fall in love with. And maybe it's cause I have a track record of that. Like If He Had Been With Me by Lauren Nolan, there were not people on the cover. Love In Other Words, no people on the cover. Um, before I let go, there is a woman on the cover, but that is like literally so rare. I think it's the only book where someone's been on the cover where I've been like, that's a five star read for me. Um, just a lot of the books that I love, like don't typically have people on the cover. Well, actually now that I'm thinking of it, only for the week when Tasha Bishop also had a person on the cover, but those are like very rare. Like it's all the other books that I've read. Most of them do not have people on the cover, like the books that I like. And so I don't know, I just gravitate towards this and I know that you shouldn't read like or judge books by their cover, but sometimes I do and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but 
I think that's gonna be a good one. I also am excited to read Alive at Night by Amelie Reese. You guys have told me to read this book. One of you guys actually, I left like a poll over on Instagram. If you're not following me there, make sure you guys do because we talk a lot about books over there. But um, I left a little like poll because I did a, a little story asking like what's a good book that was like a five star read for you that was like so good you couldn't put it down I need Rex and I left like four books for you guys to choose from and then I said if like any of these don't really like these books don't really connect with you DM me your Rex and one of you guys DM me this and said Alive at Night is so good and on the front it says when his office comes with an old surprise um, on the back it says, former childhood enemies Julian and Juniper are forced to work together, but a simple exchange could change everything. He needs help with his case and she needs a fake boyfriend. So that alone has me hooked. I'm ready to read it. I did notice though that I'm reading a lot of thick books this month, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, what If I Love You by Yvonne Marie is another book that I got in a haul that one of you guys read, absolutely loved, so I'm here for it. And this is about... Um, a girl who actually is in the workforce, uh, I think she's in like STEM, and she's neurodivergent, which I think is the coolest thing because you don't see that very often. Um, so I'm really excited to read this because I feel like it's so rare to see a black woman who is just like, I don't know, has like unique, like a uniqueness about her that you just don't read a lot about in books. So there's a friends to lovers, second chance romance. And on the back it says, there's no room for error in Renee Johnson's life. She feels like she has to have, her, have everything perfect. Um, and it just, it, it looks good. It says that they can't, the two uh, characters in this, the FMC female main character, the MMC, the male main character, they can't help but wonder what if we were always more than friends. Um, and they have chemistry between them. And one of you guys read this and you said like, please read it, you're kicking your feet, you're giggling. That's all I need to know. Like when I get a DM from you saying like, hey, thanks for recommending this or thanks for getting it in a haul, I read it and loved it. That's all I freaking need to know, I'm reading it. So adding this to my TBR for February. Um, also adding None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I read one book by this author and I wasn't a huge fan of it, um, but it was written like years past, but it just like, I don't know, it felt a little slow for me. So we're gonna give her another try and I kind of try to do that with authors because sometimes a book's just like a one-off. Like for example, I love Love and Other Words. I've also read The Unhoneymooners, The Soulmate Equation, um, and one more book by that author do I can't remember and I didn't really care for those they were okay but like Love and Other Words is a five star read for me but the other ones were like three three and a half stars so in the same way that you could find a five star read by an author and love it and the other ones could be just like okay I feel like I could find a book that I'm not obsessed with by an author but then read another one by them and maybe it's a five star read so we're gonna read None of This Is True um, by this author. This just came out last year, so I feel like that'll be a good one. I also am excited to read The Last Minute First Lady and this book. I think I showed this to you guys in a haul. Um, make sure you guys are watching all the videos, not just like the sit downs or the book shopping videos because there's literally hauls in just almost every video because I just am forever like buying books. I literally am. If I'm not buying them for me, I'm buying them for a friend. If I'm not buying them for a friend, I'm buying them for a free book library. I think books are just like, just they're so magical. If I'm not buying them, I'm going to the library and picking out books. So I'm always like grabbing a book here or there. Um, but I actually saw a, uh, quote from this book in like a TikTok and it made me want to read it and it was because this book looks innocent but apparently it's like not and I don't really have a ton of like spicy books on this little like stack but this one I think isn't like crazy spicy but it does have some spice in it which again I don't dislike spice it just can't be like too much and um this one looks like a good one they're fake dating because he needs a wife and she needs I don't know what she needs, but she needs something. And so they're gonna make this like fake relationship work while he is like running for whatever position he's running for. I also plan on reading Done and Dusted because I want to be able to report back to Sister Christy until I read this book because she just said it's really good. And I think that the second one actually comes out in like March. I really try to keep up with like the things that are coming out, but there are so many books that are coming out. And someone actually said, um, one time they were like, um, 
I feel like authors are coming out, I think it was on TikTok or something, they're like, I think authors are coming out with books faster than when I was a kid. And I actually think that's true. And I think it's because authors know the power of the internet, so you don't necessarily need a publisher to like get your book out there. Like anyone could write a book and anyone can get out there and just like blow up and like, you know, make money off of it. So I'm excited to read this one. It says she's off limits, but he's never been good at following the rules. Um, I also kind of want to get back into the, um, Chestnut Spring series now that I'm like looking at this book because I read Flawless, didn't really care for it. It was just a little too much spice, but the writing was really easy to read. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll like add it in. The thing about TBRs is I never stick to them. Literally never. So whenever you watch my video of like the books that I finished for the month, half the books probably won't even be on my TBR. Half of them will be books that I've just like picked up, just randomly decided to read. I usually read between like 16 to 20 books a month, somewhere in there. Um, and I always end up just having a bunch of random books in there. So make sure you also watch that video whenever it comes out because it is never, like I think sometimes people like watching one or the other. They wa like watching the TBR video or they like watching the video of like the recap of the books you've read. But whenever I share the books that I've read, they're always different. Like they're all these books. I promise will not be read because I'm such a mood reader. I will pick up a random book just off my shelf and be like, oh, that looks interesting. Like, oh, this red book right here, like, I wanna grab that. And that's just how I am. Um, Keep You to Myself by Brianna Denae is a book I'm excited to read because I read Spin About You by this author and rated it four stars and it was literally only a novella. This is a urban um, romance and I feel like her writing just feels so for the culture. For It feels so me, it feels so like real, it feels like the characters are real. Um, I just love her writing and I read again Spin About You and it was a four star read for me and it was a novella which never happens because I'm not a huge fan of novellas. So that just goes to show how good her writing is. So I'm excited to read like a longer book by her to see like how I really like her writing. And that is all the books that I want to read in February. Let me know the books you guys are wanting to read. I know so many of you guys are wanting to read diverse reads. So many of you guys are wanting to read romances. I actually have a video where I shared black romances so I will link that below. I also have another video where I shared like my favorite romance wreck so I will link that below so you guys can get tons of recs because you guys know that is what I read like you can see all these books are romance except I think like three which are thrillers so I'm really excited to get into this month and uh happy reading I hope you guys have some good books that are on your TBR and let me know what they are below be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys <laughs>